and welcome to another episode of the Kids Stories Podcast. I'm Phil Bechtel. Click the link in the show notes to head over to YouTube and watch a video of me and the kids making goofballs. It's so easy, and we had lots of fun doing it. So check out that video, and let me know if you end up making some goofballs yourself. Now on to some shout-outs. Felix from Kamloops enjoys the stories, and they shared a pretty awesome drawing that I very much enjoyed. Felix, I think if you were a character in the stories, you'd be a wizard with sound powers, and you could take the sound from people's mouths or make everything silent or unbearably loud. Thanks for listening, Felix. And Emmy, Molly, and Coco are fans of the show. Thanks for those drawings, Emmy and Molly. I think if you three were characters in the stories, you would be the powerful princesses of Jungle Planet. And you would use your detective and ninja skills to protect the plants and animals of Jungle Planet from poachers and bad guys. Thanks for listening, you three. As a reminder, the main idea and many details of this story were provided by Rafa and Shai, two creative kids from the city. Their ideas brought this story to life, and I hope they continue to write and share their creations. Today's episode is titled Chicken Nugget Monstrosity, Part 4. Rafa, Shai, and Katie the Scientist were again being chased through the streets of Manhattan by a large mob of angry chicken nuggets. Most of these nuggets were small, regular size, like you would find in a bag in most people's freezers. But a few of the beasts chasing them now were comprised of hundreds of nuggets that smashed themselves together to make them bigger. Some of these were the size of adult humans, and they seemed to have limitless energy. The streets were mostly empty still. The chicken nuggets had driven everyone off. The group ran right down the middle of the street. Shy, Rafa, and Katie huffed and puffed and exhausted themselves running south down Park Avenue. They're going to catch up, said Shy between breaths. We can't outrun them. They're not slowing down. We'll have to hide in a building or something, said Rafa. No more breaking into buildings, said Katie. We can't get off course now. We've got to get to the big nugget and end this. What about these cars, said Rafa. We get in one of these cars that's got keys in it and drive downtown. So the trio jogged right next to the cars, peeking in them as they passed by, looking for some that still had keys in the ignition that they could borrow. Got one, Rafa yelled, finally noticing a set of keys dangling from the ignition of a car. He opened the driver's side door and slid into the seat. Before Rafa could start the car, Katie caught up and leaned her head down. You know, I'm an actual adult with a driver's license, right? Scoot over. Rafa a bit disappointed at losing his chance to drive a car, begrudgingly scooted over to the passenger seat. Shy hopped in the back and they took off down the road. Many blocks later, Park Avenue was blocked with crushed vehicles and building debris. It was too clogged to continue in the car. They got out and continued on foot. They could not see the giant nugget, but they only had to follow the sounds of destruction. As they ran down the street, people began running the opposite direction. Some ran by, yelling at them to go back the other way. The beast is that way! Don't go down there! It's not safe! Turn back! Shy, Rafa, and Katie were not going to take the time to explain themselves, and they simply continued running until they saw it. They were surrounded by smoking, crushed vehicles. Buses, trucks, and cars that the giant chicken nugget monster had smashed. Buildings on either side of the road were damaged from the giant chicken nugget punches. And the giant chicken nugget was bigger than they remembered. It was, it was ten stories high. It stood on two crude chicken nugget legs and twisted its body. Its arms swung out with every turn, smashing anything in their path. The beast then stomped across the street and swatted an abandoned car down the road. The chicken nugget monster stomped back and forth across the road mindlessly, smashing everything in its path. Well, that's it, said Rafa. Now what? I need it to be still, said Katie. Not like still like a statue, but you see it keeps moving back and forth across the street. We have to get it to stay in the beam of the ray for it to work. Oh yeah, no problem, said Shy. I'll just go down there and ask it to sit and stay. Katie rolled her eyes. Very funny, she said. But I'm serious. I can't hold the device and point it while it's working because we need to let it overcharge and explode again. 
I have to just set it on something, and that giant chicken nugget monster needs to stay within the beam for it to work right. We need a, 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 a distraction. Something to make it stay kind of in the middle of the road. By distraction, do you mean bait? asked Shy. Katie smiled guiltily. You'll be fine. Just go down there and hit it with your bats until you get its attention, began Katie. Then just dance around, you know, and avoid its stomping legs. Yeah, we'll just avoid its stomping legs so we don't get smashed into a paste and smeared all over Park Avenue, said Rafa sarcastically. Exactly, said Katie. I'm going to get set up here on this bus while you two go do your thing. Katie began climbing up on an abandoned bus. It provided her a nice high place with a clear view down the street to the chicken nugget monster. Shy and Rafa shared a look. So I, uh, I guess we just go do this, huh? said Rafa. You take the left side and I'll take the right, said Shy. We take turns getting its attention and keep it in the middle of the street. It looks pretty slow, so as long as we're light on our feet, we should be fine. They ran down to the monster and started swinging their bats at its thick chicken nugget legs. Whenever it hit, there was a soft thumping sound. Chunks of breading chipped off its body and fell to the street. The monster swung its arms down near the brothers and stomped in frustration. They had its attention, and now they just tried to focus on not getting crushed. Meanwhile, Katie had placed the modified mass expander ray on the roof of the bus pointed right at the beast. With a few taps, she activated it, and a yellow beam shot out. The bright yellow light shone on the chicken nugget monster, and it seemed not to notice. Shy and Rafa kept hitting its legs and dodging out of the way. The beast stomped and swung at them in a rage. If it had a mouth, it would surely be roaring at them. The beam grew brighter and brighter until it was difficult to look at. The device trembled and shook and rattled on the roof of the bus. Katie climbed down from the top of the bus and ran back, anticipating the explosion. Shy and Rafa were exhausted and tripping over themselves to avoid the crushing nugget legs. They wanted to run off down the street, but they knew they just needed to keep it occupied a moment longer. With a shriek and a boom, the mass expander ray again exploded in a flash of bright yellow light. A visible wave of yellow rippled out through the entire city. The little chicken nuggets and the monsters made of smashed-together nuggets all just dropped to the ground. They were simple nuggets again, and it would only be a matter of time before the pigeons descended upon them to feast. The giant chicken nugget monster stopped stomping and swinging. It trembled and vibrated and began shrinking. Rafa and Shai watched from right there in the street as it got smaller and smaller until it was regular size again. Unfortunately, Rafa and Shai felt a similar shrinking sensation. They watched as the world around them grew larger and larger. Buildings seemed to stretch up to the sky. Nearby cars got bigger and bigger. The brothers looked down at their hands and bodies, wondering what was going on. Katie saw what was happening and she rushed to Rafa and Shai. Oh my gosh, are you two all right? she asked them bending down to her knees to get a good look at them. Did we shrink too? squeaked Shy. Yeah, yeah, you did. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't think it would happen, said Katie. I must not have calibrated the device correctly at the lab, but I'm pretty sure I can fix it. We just need to get back to the lab. Come on. Katie stood up, turned, and began running back the way they came. The boys, now the size of mice, remained in the middle of the road, since they had no hope of keeping up with Katie with their little mouse legs. Katie looked back and realized her error. She returned to the boys. Oh, my goodness, I'm so sorry. I I'll have to carry you, I guess. Come on. She reached down and scooped Shy and Rafa up in her hands. They didn't really love getting carried, but they knew if Katie didn't pick them up, they were certainly going to be stepped on accidentally, or eaten by a rat or some other awful fate. Everyone nearby was baffled when the giant chicken nugget shrank. It's like it was there one second, and then the next it wasn't. Many people thought it had just disappeared. Katie found a police officer nearby who agreed to drive her back to the tech lab. 
A few hours later, she had cobbled together another high-tech device and was ready to zap the boys back to their original size. They stood on a table across from the device she was preparing to activate. Maybe you could, you know, just like expand us to bigger than before, asked Rafa. Maybe like make us as big as grown-ups or something. No, said Katie. This device can only return you to your biggest actual size, so you'll be just as big as before. Not one ounce bigger, not one ounce smaller. A bright flash of light enveloped Rafa and Shai, and a moment later they were regular size, standing on a metal table. They climbed down and thanked Katie for making them normal-sized again. No problem, she replied. Thanks for helping me save Manhattan. Yeah, now we just need to return those bats to the sporting goods store and explain the stolen car and apologize for the broken door here at the lab, said Shai, realizing that their role in all this wasn't quite finished. I'll explain the broken door here at the lab, said Katie. I think I'm going to be doing a lot of explaining in the coming days. And you two need to get back to your field trip group. Something tells me they're probably pretty worried about you. Shai and Rafa agreed. They made their way to the police station, down streets filled with chicken nuggets. The end. Thanks for listening, friends. The website is kidstoriespodcast.com. Send all your drawings and things to kidstoriespodcast at gmail.com and find so many more stories at patreon.com forward slash kidstoriespodcast. Adios.